joined online by Mario Meyer, who is a policy analyst at Youth Capital. Mario, very good evening and welcome to Education in Daba. Good evening and thank you very much. Uh, Mario, I think if memory serves, we spoke about matric certification, uh, etc. and those kind of things and we wanted to do a follow-up with you. Am I correct? That's correct. It's about two or three weeks ago. That's it, yes. So uh, maybe just a recap uh, from your side uh, on our previous segment, Mario. Uh, happy to do so. Uh, so I work for an organization called Youth Capital, and Youth Capital is um, a youth-led campaign focused on shifting years on youth unemployment in South Africa. And our work is centered around an action plan that has three focus areas, education, transitions, that period between leaving a school institution and getting a job in the labor market uh, and jobs. And across those three focus areas, we have 10 calls to action. And when we spoke last time, we spoke specifically about certification and some research that we have asked the reset at Stellenbosch University to do focused on second chance with trick opportunities. Okay, awesome stuff. I'm trying to get this serious attention, uh, nevertheless. So what, in your view, are some of the main challenges, you know, that our young people have, uh, particularly um, disadvantaged uh, when they try to complete their education? I'll cite the work, the research we've done uh, that's in the action plan. So within the focus areas of education, we highlight four specific uh, challenges, uh, areas that make it difficult for young people to successfully complete the education journey. The one is certification, uh, so getting a certificate, a mm-hmm. school leaving certificate. And I'm happy to chat more about that yeah. in more detail. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the other three areas are um, catch us up, and that speaks to the need to have tracking data for on young people as they transition to the education system, mm-hmm. and so tracking them within their grades and across their grades, so that areas of support can be more easily identified and that support provided. The other area is catch us up. So we know that many many learners in South Africa don't have a foundation of literacy and numeracy skills and mm-hmm. many of progress despite the fact yeah. that they may not be ready for higher grades. Mm-hmm. And then so there's a need for a comprehensive catch up systems and programs in place to make sure that learners have the necessary basic competencies in their literacy and numeracy to be successful in in their grades, particularly higher grades, and more so because of the loss of learning time that's happened because of the COVID pandemic. Mm. Many school days have been lost, and so catching up will be quite important uh, over time. And the final area of the education focus area is support us, so beyond the need for academic support, and learners need quite comprehensive psychosocial support because the factors that go into successful schooling are not just the in-class mm. factors, uh, but also factors around the home and the community. And especially for young people who come from more vulnerable communities or households, there's a need for greater support, uh, including kind of counselling support and yeah. support like practical things like school feeding programs. Mm. And so holistic support is needed to to be successful in the school journey. Mm-hmm. Mario Sullivan, I want to focus on the whole issue of public employment opportunities. Um, any thoughts around that from your side? Yeah, a few thoughts. Uh, <laughs> we know that towards the end of last year, the President, uh, President Ramaphosa announced the Public Employment Stimulus Program as a way to uh, stimulate employment creation through public employment programs. And then that was rolled out towards the end of last year. One of the big components of that program is the basic employment, basic education employment initiative, which employed around 300,000 young people Mm -hmm. to work as school assistants in schools. I think we refer to it as PIP. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, That's a good way to to refer to it. Um, So we know that that program was due to come to an end at the end of March. Correct. I haven't heard anything or seen anything online about whether that those contracts have been extended or not, so mm. presumably that, those contracts have come, has to, come to an end. Yeah. You could yeah. end. So, you, you know, when we're looking at what COVID has done, you know, to our education system, to our lives, to the economy, you know, it literally 
um, affected every sphere of our lives. And, you know, I always come back to what is happening to our learners in schools, Mario. And, you know, if you can expand a bit on the school leaving certificate, what does that mean for our learners and why is it in place? Well, just to go one step back uh, to say that certification is really important to have especially school leaving certification mm-hmm. because it opens up access to further opportunities, uh, be that further learning, education and training opportunities yeah. or further uh, opportunities in the labor market. And at the moment, the matric certificate is the only school leaving certificate one yeah. And a lot of young people who start school, leave school before matric or don't pass matric and therefore they exit the schooling system without a certificate. Um, and so that puts them at a disadvantage. The majority of people who are unemployed in South Africa, of the 7.2 million people who are unemployed, 52.3% don't have a metric, um, and about 30 odd percent have a metric. So it just goes to show the importance of having a metric for success in the labor market. Mm. Um, and so not having a metric places one at a disadvantage and that's why something like the second chance the trick program is very important and the grade nine certificate uh, the general education certificate is intended to open up a wider range of possibilities for young people who do exit school before before the trick so that they have more opportunities to pursue post-school education and training uh, or to pursue options in the labor market mm. so it brought a, a school leaving certificate at grade nine or would broaden the opportunities available to young people. Mm-hmm. Mario, somewhere uh, there's mention made of a survey that you guys are currently doing. Uh, maybe just share with our listeners how can we, you know, become involved in this particular in this particular survey, and how do we go about it? That's right. We're currently running a survey that's focused on uh, public employment programs and specifically the basic education employment initiative that we've just spoken about. Uh, so we w- would like to get the, the fear from young people and schools as well about the experience of either having been a school assistant or having hosted school assistant. Uh, so I'd like to find out what what worked well, uh, what perhaps didn't work as well, because we think that public employment programs, since they are funded using the taxpayers' money, should be sh- should be as effective as possible. Uh, so we'd like to get a better understanding of particularly how the, this, this program has just come to an end has worked and if it's been successful in not only providing these short-term employment opportunities for young people, but also giving them the knowledge, the skills, the networks and the support to access the next opportunity. Because they have been short-term contracts and so there may be many young people who have now come to the end of this this contract and may just be in a period of unemployment again because they don't have the next opportunity to to go on to. And so we'd like to better understand these programs and better understand how they can be better designed and improved to Mm. make sure that they are that they are pathways for young people to not go from unemployment to short term employment to being unemployed again. But to go from short term unemployment to go from unemployment to a short-term employment to another opportunity that moves them forward in their career journey because they get knowledge and skills through that, through mm-hmm. that opportunity. So the survey link is available on Youth Capital's Facebook page, on social media, as well as on the website. So if anyone has recently been a school assistant, is currently a school assistant, we'd love to hear from them, as well as schools who are hosting or have hosted school assistants, would also love to to get their feedback on the experiences. Okay. Well, Mario, thanks very much. Uh, that's just Mr. Mario Mayer, the Policy Analyst at Youth Capital. Uh, thanks once again for your participation to the program and sharing this very valuable information with our listeners. And on that note, we wish you a pleasant evening further. And may the week ahead be a fruitful one. And we say to you a very blessed evening. Thank you very much.